TODAY WE'RE TALKING ABOUT THE IMPORTANCE OF CHRIST'S CHURCH. AND I'D LIKE TO READ A SCRIPTURE OUT OF HEBREWS CHAPTER 10 AND VERSE 25. IT SAYS THIS. IT SAYS, NOT FORSAKING THE ASSEMBLING OF OURSELVES TOGETHER, AS THE MANNER OF SOME IS, BUT EXHORTING ONE ANOTHER, AND SO MUCH MORE AS YOU SEE THE DAY APPROACHING. NOT FORSAKING THE ASSEMBLING OF OURSELVES TOGETHER. NOW, we're, TODAY WE'RE TALKING ABOUT THE IMPORTANCE OF CHRIST'S CHURCH, BUT MY QUESTION IS, REALLY, WHAT IS THE CHURCH? YOU KNOW, I WENT INTO A LOCAL CHURCH HERE IN COLORADO SPRINGS WITH THE DISCIPLESHIP EVANGELISM PROGRAM, AND WE HAD BEEN WORKING OUT IN THE FIELD FOR A WHILE, AND WITHIN SIX WEEKS, SIX WEEKS OF WORKING WITH THIS LOCAL CHURCH, WE HAD ESTABLISHED 20 BIBLE STUDIES OUTSIDE OF THAT LITTLE LOCAL CONGREGATION. AND FOR MONTHS WE WERE WORKING WITH THOSE PEOPLE, AND THE PASTOR ONE DAY REALLY CONFUSED ME WHEN HE SAID THIS. HE SAID SOMETHING SIMILAR TO THIS. HE SAYS, YOU KNOW, THE BIBLE SAYS, THAT THE LORD ADDED TO THE CHURCH DAILY SUCH AS SHOULD BE SAVED. WHY AREN'T WE SEEING THESE PEOPLE COME INTO OUR CHURCH, COME INTO THE CHURCH? THE LORD ADDED TO THE CHURCH DAILY SUCH AS SHOULD BE SAVED. WELL, WE WERE OUT IN THE FIELD. PEOPLE WERE BEING SAVED, AND PEOPLE WERE BEING DISCIPLED AND MINISTERED TO. BUT WHAT THE PASTOR REALLY MEANT IS, WHY AREN'T THEY MEETING TOGETHER ON SUNDAY MORNING IN THIS BUILDING? AND YOU KNOW, MY CONCEPT OF THE CHURCH WAS A LITTLE OFF, TOO. SO THAT REALLY TROUBLED ME, AND I DIDN'T REALLY KNOW WHAT TO DO. AND I THOUGHT, YOU KNOW, IS THE DISCIPLESHIP EVANGELISM PROGRAM REALLY WORKING? ARE WE REALLY REACHING PEOPLE'S LIVES? AND I KNEW WE WERE OUT THERE REACHING ALL OF THESE PEOPLE, BUT THEY WERE NOT COMING TO THE SUNDAY MORNING SERVICE, AND IT REALLY CONFUSED ME. SO I DECIDED I WOULD DO A STUDY ON WHAT IS THE WORD CHURCH REALLY MEAN. AND SO <clears throat> THIS IS WHAT I DISCOVERED. I DISCOVERED THIS. I DISCOVERED THAT FROM ROMANS CHAPTER 16, VERSE 3, 1 CORINTHIANS 16, 19, COLOSSIANS 4, 15, PHILEMON CHAPTER 1, VERSE 2, ACTS CHAPTER 5, VERSE 42, ACTS CHAPTER 20, AND VERSE 20, THAT PRIMARILY THE BIBLE SPOKE ABOUT THE EARLY NEW TESTAMENT CHURCH MEETING IN SOMEBODY'S HOME. NOW I KNOW TODAY THAT uh, THERE'S HOME CHURCHES, THERE'S LARGE CONGREGATIONS OF CHURCHES, THERE'S MEGA CHURCHES, THERE'S ALL KINDS OF CHURCHES. BUT uh, ONE OF THE THINGS THAT REALLY CAUGHT MY ATTENTION WAS THIS, THAT FIRST OF ALL, AS I NOTICED THE SCRIPTURE, PRIMARILY THE NEW TESTAMENT CHURCH SEEMED TO MEET TOGETHER IN A SMALL CONGREGATION INTO PEOPLE'S HOMES. AND SO I DECIDED I WOULD DO A LITTLE WORD STUDY ON THE WORD CHURCH TO FIND OUT REALLY WHAT THE SCRIPTURES IS REALLY MEANING ABOUT THE WORD CHURCH. And, AND THIS IS WHAT I DISCOVERED. I'M JUST GOING TO READ A LITTLE BIT OF THIS INFORMATION. THIS CAME FROM THE EXPOSITORY DICTIONARY OF BIBLE WORDS BY LAWRENCE O. RICHARDS, AND HE STATES THIS. HE SAYS, ANYONE MAY BE EXCUSED FOR BEING A BIT CONFUSED ABOUT THE MEANING OF THE WORD CHURCH. WE USE THE WORD IN SO MANY WAYS. IT MEANS A PARTICULAR BUILDING, THAT IS THE CHURCH ON 4TH STREET, OR ON 8TH STREET, OR THE CHURCH DOWNTOWN. IT CAN MEAN A DENOMINATION OF ORGANIZED FAITH, LIKE THE REFORMED CHURCHES OF AMERICA OR THE BAPTIST CHURCH. OR IT COULD MEAN, DID YOU GO TO CHURCH ON, on SUNDAY? WHICH MEANS, DID YOU GO TO CHURCH TODAY? DID YOU MEET OVER THERE ON SUNDAY? AND THEN uh, THIS BIBLE DICTIONARY SAYS THIS, none of, these use it, NONE OF THESE USES IS PARTICULARLY BIBLICAL. AND I GOT TO THINKING, WHAT DOES, that, what does THIS REALLY MEAN? WHAT DOES THE WORD CHURCH REALLY MEAN? I'M GOING TO FURTHER QUOTE. IT SAYS THIS. It says, IT SAYS, SINCE MANY PERSONS THINK OF A CHURCH AS A BUILDING FOR RELIGIOUS SERVICES RATHER THAN A CONGREGATION ENGAGING IN WORSHIP, THE RENDERING CHURCH CAN BE MISLEADING. NOW, WHEN I WENT TO THE GREEK AND INTO THE HEBREW WORD, THE GREEK WORD ECCLESIA, I FOUND OUT THAT THAT WORD CHURCH LITERALLY JUST MEANS THIS. IT MEANS AN ASSEMBLY OF PEOPLE TOGETHER FOR THE PURPOSE OF WORSHIP OR PRAYER OR PRAISE OR JUST LOOKING UNTO GOD. IT REALLY MEANS AN ASSEMBLY. THE WORD ECCLESIA REALLY JUST MEANS AN ASSEMBLY OF PEOPLE THAT ARE ASSEMBLED TOGETHER IN THE NAME OF THE LORD JESUS FOR THE PURPOSE OF WORSHIP. I'M GOING TO READ SOME OTHER THINGS HERE. IT SAYS, ECCLESIA IN THE NEW TESTAMENT CAN ENCOMPASS ANY NUMBER OF BELIEVERS. IT CAN BE USED OF SMALL GROUPS THAT MET IN HOMES, ROMANS 16, 5. IT CAN MEAN ALL BELIEVERS LIVING IN A LARGE CITY 
Acts 11.22, or a geographical district such as Asia or Galatia. Furthermore, it's, it states this, the typical meeting of the church of a congregation when they met was basically this. This comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 26. When a congregation met, it said everyone had a hymn, a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Uh, interpretation. Individuals shared, and others weighed carefully what was said. Sharing remains essential to the very existence of the church as a community of faith. Persons were expected to contribute and to serve others with his or her spiritual gifts. And so what we're really saying is, what the scripture is saying, when well, I began to read it and when we first started this little lesson in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse uh, 25, it said, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. You know, the church is an assembly of people together for the purpose of looking to Jesus, praising the Lord, of, of uh, getting direction from Him and following through with that direction. And the primary purpose of the early New Testament church was edification. It was building up. It was to be built up. All right? And here's really what happened. Here's what I believe the New Testament is really saying about the church. First of all, the early church was an evangelistic church. What do I mean by that? I mean that people were scattered everywhere sharing their faith in Jesus Christ. And as they shared their faith in Jesus Christ, the Lord added to the church, not to a building, but added to the people of God as they repented, as they believed. And then they assembled themselves together to encourage one another to exercise their spiritual gifts to serve one another, to a lot of time fellowship with one another in a, with a meal, and so on and so forth. And they exercised their spiritual gifts among one another. Then they preached the word again, and the whole cycle began again. They believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. They assembled together. And it didn't matter where they assembled. It could be in a building. It could be a large amount of people or it could be a small amount of people like it was in the early New Testament church when some of them met in homes. It didn't really matter as long as they met together in the name of the Lord for the purpose to exercise their gifts, to encourage one another, to fellowship with one another with the end result being edification, being to be built up. And so... I discovered that what we were doing through that local church I was talking about with the Discipleship Evangelism Program, when we were meeting in 20 different Bible studies throughout the city, that what we were doing, we're really meeting in 20 different churches, not really churches plural, but we were meeting as the church 20 times a week because we met together in the name of the Lord Jesus to encourage one another to look to the Lord Jesus, to be instructed out of the Word of God, and to exercise our spiritual gifts. And so no matter what church you go to, no matter if you're in a denominational church, a non-denominational church, if you are meeting in a mega church or a small home group, no matter what you're doing, the Scripture is telling us that as we see the day approaching, as the days are getting evil, as, as sin abounds, the grace of God much more abounds, but it's going to abound within these assemblies of God's people in the church where each part, each believer has a part of uh, the ministry of Jesus Christ as we minister to one another, as we exhort one another, as we encourage one another, as we exercise our spiritual gifts with one another. So if you're not with a group of believers there's a meeting like that, you need to do that. Even if you just even if it's two or three of you that are meeting in the name of the Lord Jesus, you need to meet together on a regular basis to use your spiritual gifts, to exhort one another, to encourage one another, to, to look to Jesus together, to pray for one another. And there's a lot we could say about the church. We could talk about, uh, you know, elders, overseers, pastors, church government, but that's not the purpose of our teaching today. The purpose of our teaching is to today is you're not a one-man island to yourself. You can't survive that way. God has created us where we need one another and we need to meet together as God's church and encourage one another 
and serve one another with the spiritual gifts that God has given us. So God bless you. I encourage you, meet together today with God's people.